Hey, this is Steve with The More We Explore. I'd like to give you a tour of my van, Fred. Fred is a 1997 Ford Econoline E350 EB extended body, 15 passenger van with a 7.3 liter diesel motor. Has 138,000 miles on it. It's got a 4x4 conversion on it from Tulsa Truck Manufacturing with suspension from U-Joint Off-Road that I installed myself, and it is rated to tow 10,000 pounds. Fred serves as our toy hauler. We store our bikes, tools, camping gear in here, and it's even a stealth camper when we want to be camping without the Airstream. Fred has a 7.3 liter turbo diesel motor made by International. It took me forever to find this configuration with the long body, passenger van with the 7.3. These 7.3s are hard to find and Fred's only got 138,000 miles. These motors go forever and they're detuned in the van so they make a little bit less power than the trucks but that means they last a little bit longer. The vans don't have intercoolers so you can't mod them up quite as much but I'm okay with that. Everything's pretty much stock under the hood. We got a battery here, we got another battery under the frame rail so it comes with dual batteries. I've got some auxiliary stuff. I've got an amplifier for my subwoofer and an amplifier for my speakers. Other than that, everything under here is 100% stock. This is a Larson antenna dual band for our ham radio that we're in the process of installing right now. Kenwood is one of our sponsors and they've given us a great ham radio setup for this van. Can't wait to get it installed. One thing that's extra is Fred has an auxiliary transmission cooler, which is really nice. Keeps the transmission nice and cool. We've never had the temperature over halfway, even pulling the Airstream in Colorado. Does a really good job. Up front, I completely redid the suspension. When I bought this, it came with a Tulsa Trucks Manufacturing 4x4 conversion, and they did a terrible job on the suspension. The drivetrain, like the transfer case and the drive shafts were pretty good, but I didn't like the suspension. So we contacted U-Joint, and they sponsored us for this build. And I've actually got a build thread where I show how I took out all the old suspension and put all this on. Got some videos on that you're welcome to watch. But up front, we have a 2002 F350 front axle that has 90,000 miles on it. But I completely stripped it, rebuilt the entire thing. New ball joints, new bearings, new brakes, new everything. And it's super solid up front. It has U-Joint Off-Road 6-inch lift kit, which is fantastic. It drives better than stock. It has... Great articulation, it does a great job towing, it's an all-around fantastic package. It's got the crossover steering, it's got dual Bilstein shocks up front. I did that because there's so much weight on front with the 7.3 that I didn't want to blow through my travel too fast and it's been working out great. Stainless steel brake lines, brand new drive shaft from Tom Woods 4x4 drive shafts, and it's got 410 gears in it. So this is a Dana 60 one ton axle. Let's go around to the back. The rear axle is from a 2004 F350. It's a Sterling 10 and a half with 410 gears and a limited slip in the diff, which is really cool. We've also got the six inch springs from U-Joint, uh, new brake lines, new brakes. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome in the back. Pretty standard stuff though. It's nice to be able to go with all Ford stuff. Got a stock exhaust. Uh, we've removed the spare tire back here and other than that everything's stock up here. I decided to go with 35 inch tires. These are Cooper ST Max 305 7018s on a fuel 18 by 9 aluminum rim. These rims are rated to hold a lot of weight so they're great for towing and great off-road and it's not too low profile so I can still air down but I still have a short enough sidewall that it's stiff and not squirmy on the road. I absolutely love these tires. I've run them on four rigs and I will continue to run them. I've never had a flat. They're great off-road, they're great on-road, great in the snow. I will keep getting these Cooper ST Maxes. And then we decided to go with a fender flare. For a while I ran it without flares, but these are Bushwhacker flares from U-Joint Off-Road. Easy to install. They actually made the van look a little tamer. It didn't look quite so extreme. So if you're going for an extreme look, don't get the flares, but if you want to look a little more civilian, more normal, get the flares, and it keeps mud and snow off the side of your van as well. When you lift the van six inches, it gets really high and it's hard to get in and out. So we decided to go with aluminous aluminum steps. These are not sliders, they're not, they call them nerf bars, they can't be used for pivoting on rocks or anything like that. 
This is my first vehicle without steel tube bumpers here that I use to wheel. Um, they're light, they were a pain in the butt to install, but we absolutely love them. They're easy to get in and out and they look great. Since we do a lot of towing and we tow our home, our Airstream with us wherever we go, I decided to modify this to accept some towing mirrors. So these retract. They really help with towing and they make it look a little bit meatier. I don't know if that's important or not, but I'm so glad I have these mirrors for the towing alone. All right, let's take a look inside. We got a lot going on inside. This has to serve as our living area and our gear hauler. We got our two stand-up paddle boards here from Sea Eagle. They sponsor us. They are a fantastic company. These are inflatable. We love getting out on lakes. This is our compressor. This is our full-size spare tire, which is in a terrible place. We're gonna have to build a bumper. We didn't have time to build a rear tire carrier before I left out here. So that's just a temporary thing. This is our rinse kit. It's a portable shower, rinse off kit, wherever we go for the boats, the bikes, the paddle boards, uh, cleaning ourselves off, cleaning the dog off. We use this so much. Behind the rinse kit is a Magnum Dimensions Pure Sine Wave Inverter. It's a 2000 watt inverter. We got a power strip on here. That inverter is amazing. We've got all new JBL stereo or speakers all over, uh, powered by a 50 watt amplifier. I'll put links to all these specs in the description so you can check them out. Over here, we have an ARB fridge freezer. Really cool. This one is, I can't remember the size on this. I wanna say like a 48 quart, but I'm really just guessing. We've got our Coleman stove right here. Probably need to find a better place for that. That's kind of the main area in here. We can sit in here, we can work in here. I can sit up just fine. It's got central AC and rear AC and heater, which is really nice. Even though we don't have people back there, it's great to be able to crank that and warm the whole van up. All right, let's take a look at the cockpit. Fred has power windows, power doors, and power locks, and cruise control, and a, we've got a glow plug bypass switch. So it bypasses the internal relay, which is really nice. That means the glow plugs don't turn on every time I turn the key on. So that saves the glow plugs a lot of wear and tear. Up here, I have my Hawkshead Talon 22 TPMS system. It monitors the tire pressure and temperature in the van and in the Airstream when I'm towing it. Down here, I have a Takansha brake controller for the trailer brakes. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description as well. That thing is worth its weight in gold. It's so much better than the draw tight one that this van came with. We absolutely love this controller. And then down here, we've got our transfer case lever where we shift into four wheel drive. Kenwood is one of our sponsors and they've hooked us up with a fantastic ham radio, the D710G. I'm almost done installing it. This is where the head unit is gonna be. Here we have an Alpine head unit that's a Bluetooth auxiliary in USB unit really great little unit um, it's especially handy when google maps is telling me where to go i love being able to hear it through all my speakers it's connected to two amplifiers i'll put those link in the description one of them is a 50 watt that just goes to all the speakers another one is a 500 watt amp for the sub up here we have our gopro hero 4 black we film almost all our driving with our with our GoPro and that pretty much stays there. Here we've got some GoPro batteries that we charge just to keep them topped off all the time. Up here is another handheld ham radio from Kenwood. This is the D72. Also has APRS functionality in it. And then this console is from a newer Ford. I don't remember the model. I got it off eBay. I love it. You can store a ton more stuff. These vans don't have glove boxes, so this is a glove box. So I keep my registration, doodads, another ham radio in there, knife, flashlight, stuff like that. Um, this has dual front airbags, which is nice. And yeah, that's pretty much the cockpit. Over here on the left, we've got our sleeping platform that we built. There's not a ton of room. We're not going to be sitting up and watching TV or reading a book in here, but it's enough that we can sleep and crash in here if we need to. Over here is the bike storage, but let's go around to the back so I can show you that a little better. 
This sleeping platform and storage and drawers took hundreds of hours and I have to give a huge shout out to my buddy Dave. We spent so many nights into six in the morning all night through working on this, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. Over here, I'm gonna open the door all the way to open the doors. I'm pretty happy with this bike slide. I've got a wrench I cut off for my switch here. I just pull that out and we can fit two bikes in here. We gotta turn the handlebars on the second bike, but this comes out and catches really sturdy. We can load and unload the bikes. Put them back in. Over here, I've got some storage cubbies where I've got camelbacks and tools and stuff. And up here is our sleeping platform. Underneath the sleeping platform, we have a whole bunch of action packers. I count six of them. We love our action packers. These are really cool. I don't know if they're watertight, but they can handle being out in the rain. Flip these down. You can even put a padlock on them if you want. Then the lid comes off. These are amazing little boxes. They're made by Rubbermaid, and I'm going to put a link to them in the description. But this is where we keep all our stuff. We've got camping gear, emergency gear, bike gear, all of our sleeping bags fit into one. Um, anyway, that's a great way to do that. We can also pull those out and stick the stand-up paddle boards in there, and we can access it from the front as well, from behind the spare tire. Now let's take a look at our drawers. I'm super proud of these drawers. I built these off a of design off Expedition Portal. Let me fasten this. But we modified it and made it our own. So these slide out a good five or six feet. And in here we've got pack rafts, tents, PFDs, bear canisters, uh, our backpacking gear, my disc golf gear, hammocks, trekking poles. This is our backpacking list, bear spray, it's all in here. Really nice to be able to just slide that know it's always with me tucked away over here is my toolbox i use this almost daily here we go the hardest part for me about being a minimalist was getting rid of a lot of my tools here are the bare essentials that i brought this bag closest to the front is what i use the most zip ties super glue body trim panel removers, my all-time favorite tool, this Stanley adjustable wrench that takes up the last bit of slack, super cool. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, wire strippers, wrenches with the swivet, swivel ratchet heads, I love these. Here's a bag of a whole bunch of different metric bolt sizes and nuts and washers. Haven't had to use that, but if I do, I will have it. Screwdrivers, tape, exacto, electrical tape. These I use about weekly. Next up is all my Milwaukee stuff. We use this. This is a 700 foot pound impact wrench. Haven't had to use it on the car, but we use it on the um, feet, the stabilizer jacks on the Airstream. Got my charger for that. Bunch of batteries, drill. Then a little impact guy, and I got my drill bits in here. I've also got a bunch of random screws, different lengths, a couple nut certs, a couple bolts in here in case I want to add on or change any of my storage platform. Got to be real organized. Here's stuff I hope I never have to use, but it's got vice grips, pliers, all my sockets. I just went to Harbor Freight and got a whole bunch of cheap sockets, vice grips, that sort of thing. I've got my impact sockets. I use these all the time when I'm wrenching at home. Hopefully I don't have to use them here. In here I've got my soldering iron and heat shrink gun, which I've only used once and I'm probably going to leave this at home. I'd I love making a good solder connection, but on the road, all I really need to do is use butt connectors to get me home till I can really solder it right. By home, I mean my mom's spot. 
our home address. Um, this is full of shackles and toe straps and jumper cables. Here's another socket set. This one's cool. These are pass-through, so if it's a long bolt, you can use these. These are also metric and standard. I haven't had a problem with them. Every once in a while, I come across a job that only these will do, and they're small, so I got them. We've got max tracks in here. Hope to never need to use those, but we've actually used them a ton. Not with Fred, but with other vehicles. They've rescued us from a lot of situations. Paper towels. Big mallet, rubber mallet. Big shovel. I've got ratchet straps and a tire plug kit. We use these all the time off-roading. Haven't had to use them on the van yet. I've got some paint to touch stuff up and these super awesome big three foot zip ties I found at Ace. Haven't ever used them. I usually forget that I've got them. Actually, I did use them. I used them to tie down the battery in the Airstream. But these are cool in case I need to strap a leaf spring on or something, who knows. It's good to have options when stuff goes wrong. And those are my tools. Fred is a fantastic vehicle. We absolutely love this van. It's only left us stranded once when the ignition switch went out, so I had to fix that. But other than that, there have been zero problems. It gets 16 miles to the gallon when it's not towing, 12 miles to the gallon when it's towing. It is extremely reliable. It's nice having low miles on this, knowing this thing is gonna go for another 400,000 miles without major problems. It's fun, it get, does extremely well in the snow. We've never had it stuck, but we've never been hardcore rock crawling with it before like in Moab, but it's really impressive where this thing will go. It's fun to drive, it's fun to explain the story with other people, and I'm glad I could show it to you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section below. I look forward to answering them.